All right, guys, welcome back to Roleplay Dark Heresy. Steve, I believe uh, you're still in command here, so take it away. Right on. Okay, so um, just to remind you of what's been going on, and some of these names you're going to want to start jotting down just so you can remember them because they're crazy, ridiculously long. Great. Uh, so you, you are in the Calixis sector in the Segmentum Obscurum. You're in the subsector known as Hazaroth Abyss on the city encrusted hive world of Samson 4. You're in High View Traxis, which hosts about 3 billion people. There's roughly 18 billion people on all of Samson 4. And High View Traxis is directly overseen by planetary governor Zaria Theopoia. And the planet itself has like a feudal structure, so she's basically the, the queen of this planet as well as the planetary governor. Planetary governor is like an imperial uh, recognition, whereas queen is what she is on the planet. And the reason that you've been sent here um, by Inquisitor... Hadrax Ishmael Ignacio Jacobim IV, is that uh, planetary governor Zaria Theopoia has been very slightly under her quotas, like less than 0.1% for the annual imperial tithe of raw materials. Like the Imperium, because there are so many worlds and they're so diverse and different, uh, the Imperium relies on trade between all of its worlds to get by. And n basically none of that trade is is willing. It's all in the form of tithes that the Imperium yep. extracts from worlds. So um, a few weeks ago, the Imperial tithe ships arrived in orbit with the four of you all on board. And tonight is the annual tithing festival. And all of Highview Traxxas is decked out for the festivities. And the loading docks are laden with millions of tons of ore, plast steel, and Samson Force signature export, the subtly magnetic substance called Samsonite. So, um, really, like Inquisitor uh, Hadrax Ishmael Ignacio Jacobin IV, he doesn't really think there's, there's something crazy crazy going on. He thinks probably it's, it's, it's probably just a miscalculation or like an underperforming loading crew. But even just a very little bit of, um, of, of failure is unacceptable to the Imperium and to the Inquisition. So um, it's, it's probably about like 9 p.m. in the evening. Uh, the, the sun, which is slightly more distant than the sun here on Earth, so it's probably about half the size and it's a little bit cooler, is setting over the horizon, and you can see it setting in the um, northwestern windows of the hive. You are staying in the section of the hive that is um, called the Ophili block, because it's run by the noble family uh, Ophili, O-P-H-E-L-I-E. -E. And... Um, like, it's, it's really a festival. At midnight tonight, they're going to start loading all of these goods up onto the ships. Uh, and, and in the meantime, basically the entire block has been decked out with decorations on the walls. Um, all of, like, the giant sort of uh, cathode ray tubes are playing um, announcements and speeches from all of the nobility, including um, occasional exhortations from planetary governor Zarya Theopoya to, you know... Work hard for the emperor, you know, uh, return to the emperor what is the emperor's and return to, uh, return to Samson 4 what is Samson 4's, that's, that sort of thing. So um, currently, uh, all of you are sort of hanging out in a dive bar uh, in, in the, um, let's see, what exactly is it called? It's a center hive trading class housing block. And... Um, You've heard a couple of people talking excitedly about a couple of events. It, it sounds like the the local arbitrator group that's that's working in the um, in the Ophili block is hosting a um, stun stick competition, sort of uh, who who can best the most foes in in melee combat. And um, similarly, um, what is his name? Uh, Theseus Ophili, the nobleman in charge of the Ophili block, is actually holding a sharpshooting competition as well. And both of those are down uh, probably about a 20-minute walk through the hive. Um, there's, there's a couple of other things going on as well. So, you know, what do you, what do you think you're going to get up to this evening? Are we all paired together like we were to dispatch as a unit? Yeah. How many, like, missions have we been on together as a group? I think that's up to you guys. 
Is this your first, or have you have you worked you, together before? What do you guys? What do you want to do? One mm. thousand. <laughs> so lucky one thousand. And I forgot to tell you, I've killed thousands of foes. So there's a whole bunch of experience that we have. Yet. <laughs> he is wearing Clearly. Terminator armor uh, on I would his say face. Like three or four or something like that. Yeah, you know? something right. something low. And yeah. one of those included saving a person's dog, like okay. something really easy. <laughs> That, that's From important. The, Three to four uh, tasks to save. My dog. dog stuck up in that warp hole. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone oh. do it? Here you are, little Billy. <laughs> the dog has fallen to chaos. I'm so sorry. <laughs> dog and then I killed it, right? And then I just <laughs> slice its throat in front of the guy. It wasn't our greatest mission ever. But <laughs> Maybe that was the one where. Uh, what, who was it who failed their first mission? Jax? Like, you know, uh, yeah. clearly not performing up to the level of standard expected by Inquisitor Hadrax Ishmael Ignatius Jacob in the fourth. Cut his pay. Yeah, yeah. That sucks. That sucks. Yeah. Um, all right, so I assume we're just all grouped together at this party talking. Yeah. Okay. And there's a, there's a couple of waiters bringing around trays of, of fine Amasek brandy. Well, I guess as a noble afford. person, I, I know what that is, so I guess I'm drinking that and, and quite happy with it. All right. It's pretty decent. It's not, it's not super high quality, because after all, we're just in like the, the trading class uh, section of the hive. We're not in the nobility class section. Oh, oh, shit, that's right. Would we have any motivation to try out? Like, they're holding a sharpshooting contest. The prize is uh, a giant stuffed guilt. Terranid. Oh, it's a hundred. Th oh. All right, okay, now it's interesting. <laughs> We're well, gonna light up a light up an eho and say, "Well, reckon I should uh, head over to the sharpshooting contest." <laughs> well, I I would be interested in the variety of different weapons on display there to analyze and discover the technology of this particular hive world. So yeah. I will head on over there with reluctance but curiosity, with awesome. little intention to participate, but. Maybe. We'll did, see. Did we have to take off all of our gear before we came in here, or is it just a custom to wear your weapons and whatnot when you walk around? Nah, I mean, you know, High View Traxxas is relatively safe, which means that people only get stabbed every day. So, you know. Fair enough. Uh, <laughs> it, it's dangerous enough that nobody looks askance that you're wearing, you know, like a uh, chain coat, that kind of thing. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, I guess I, I kind of unsheath my hunting rifle and say like yeah i guess i should go over to the uh the ballistics range and and see uh how else everyone fares amongst myself awesome i think while they go to the ballistics range knowing that we don't actually have anyone who's good in hand-to-hand -hand combat <laughs> i'm just gonna go scout out maybe potential folks that we could use in future yeah. missions so i will go check out the hand-to-hand -hand combat that competition. So as Frick says, I'm going to put out my EHO stick on the table and say, whatever gets you no, to sleep I, tonight, Frick. I'm sorry. If you, if you thought that I was going to compete, you're wrong. <laughs> I, only, I only wish to go observe. Now, I didn't expect much of you, you thinking types. Are you going to do the Texan accent the entire show? <laughs> yeah. Because I'm really welcome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Perfect. he's a grumpy old man, Texan thug from Catachan. Perfect. Perfect. Awesome. Catachan. So you're walking on down towards the uh, sharpshooting contest. Um, as, as you walk sort of down these hallways, like uh, the ceiling is sort of like exposed cables and like wires traveling all along it. The walls are kind of like darkened steel. Um, in a couple of like sort of what, what you consider to be back alleys of the hive, like there's just like people drunk or taking a piss or, you know, having a decent, having a, a, a not so decent time of themselves. Um, on some of the screens that you pass by, you see planetary governor Zarya Theopoya and her, you know, railing about the righteousness of the emperor. You know, it, it gives you a good feeling. Like, you know, um, you feel like tonight's going to go pretty well. You're not, you're not really going to uncover too much. In fact, maybe she's actually going to make up for her past, her past uh, quota failures tonight. So you make it down into the, um, into the, the large commons area. And immediately as you go in, like, the, the, the smell of unwashed humanity combined with, like, searing meat and, like, oils and spices, like, just assails you. And the room is, like, um, it's truly massive. It's, like, bigger than the size of a football field. Um, 
uh, all along the walls are like basically uh, food stands selling all manner of food. Um, there's there's like uh, a couple of servitors just sort of stumbling through the crowd. Um, you can tell from looking at them that that they're actually combat servitors, and they have the, the mark of the um, Adeptus Arbites on their left breast. And um, immediately, uh, one of the Arbiters comes running up to Jax. Uh, his name is um, Craig, K-R-E-G. Craig the and Servitor? Says, no, this is an Arbiter. Oh, okay. And he says, oh, Jax, Jax, are you here to participate in the sharpshooting? Yeah, I'm fixing to give it a shot. <laughs> oh, that's so great, man. I, I know you'll do real well. Now, uh, it's going to get started in three minutes, so you got to get over there, buddy. The competition starts when I mosey on over there. Uh, uh, all right, all right, Jax. You, you, get, your, you get yourself mosey in. And he, he runs off in that same direction. I mosey. All right. Uh, <laughs> you come on up, and you see... Um, let's see... You see a, um, a tall, noble gentleman um, who, who looks like he's sort of very carefully cultivated his noble air. He's standing in the middle of sort of a circle of people with two people next to them. One of them is Craig, and one of them is a woman you don't know. And um, he says, he, he, he starts talk, talking, and his, his voice just sounds like, it sounds creepy and, and it's kind of sinister. Um, He's, he's wearing, like, a, a big, fine cloak uh, of his office. And you can obviously see under, like, the left-hand side of his cloak, there's a, a semi-long bulge. Looks like he's probably got some kind of gun packed up along his side. And he says, Welcome, welcome, denizens of House Ophelia. Come forwards now, and we will see who can earn 100 throne gelt in a contest of sharp shooting." Is this all? Do we have any more takers? I'd he like to try it. Crowd. All right. He, he points at you. He says, yes, yes, good sir. What is your name? My name's Jax. Jax, you're not from around here, are you, Jax? Uh, no, sir. I've seen a lot of space. <laughs> all right. Well, step forwards. We'll see how you are with that. What, what kind of gun are you, are you carrying with you, Jax? Well, I've got several. What kind are we allowed to use? Uh, whatever gun is your personal preference, my good sir. I want to see your actual skill, not some sort of flim-flam concocted with fake rules and silly restrictions. How far away is the target, friend? 30 meters, he points out the wall just over there. And, like, right next to a couple of food stands, there's, like, a, a space that's been cleared, and there's, like... A couple of pieces of paper that have been like tacked onto the wall with some circles drawn on them. Well, then I guess I'll use my good old scatter gun. Ah, ah, a fan of the shotgun, eh? Well, <laughs> you're gonna bring a shotgun I. to an That's accuracy <laughs> contest. You're like, ah, yes, let me shoot this target. <laughs> it's 30 meters away, my range is 30. What the fuck? Jax. Oh, I, I feel I must advise you that the technical specifications of this weapon are not optimal for your task. Do you figure a last pistol better? Well, the last pistol is more accurate. The uh, scatter gun's special rules mean that it scatters, which means that uh, outside of a certain distance, the shots are unlikely to be effective. Figure as I'm the pellets sure would probably you know. hit the target, but that's fine. We'll go with the last pistol. Jax, as I'm sure you're well aware, the optimal range of your average pattern lads pistol is around 30 meters only. This would be at the extreme of its specification. Yeah, that's the two guns I got. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Very well, says, says Theseus. He, he, he turns to the rest of the crowd. He says, anybody else? Going once, going, uh, going twice. I throw my I, hands up in the air. Uh, he points at you and he says, yes, you in the... What in hell are you wearing, sir? <laughs> Be like, ah, this is the finest black body glove you've ever seen, isn't it? <laughs> Good God, man. Very well, come forwards. What is your weapon of choice? I say, am I allowed to, uh, to use this here hunting rifle? Ah, a hunting rifle. It is only 30 meters, but uh, I assume it would be adequate enough. I'm 
certain that Zarya Theopoya would appreciate your choice of weaponry, and the crowd sort of chuckles to themselves. Okay. <laughs> Say, can I use the gun or what? <laughs> yes, yes, of course. Step up to the firing line, gentlemen. And uh, the four of you step forwards, including the woman. Okay. And he says, all right, you may, you may fire. We will start with Craig. So Craig uh, pulls up his last pistol, and he takes a shot. Uh, and he gets a 16, which is lower than his uh, weapon pr or ballistic proficiency of uh, 25. So he hits. Um, he doesn't get any degrees of success. So um, he just sort of clips the corner of the target with his, with his last pistol. But, um, you know, uh, Theseus Ophelie, the man who's running the contest, he sort of claps his hands. He says, ah, yes, well done. Well done, sir. Now, <laughs> now uh, let's try the hunting rifle. Yes. Uh, all right, so this is just a straight up 1D100. I don't get any bonuses or anything, right? No. All right, here we go. 14, not bad. Oh, wow, very nice. What's your ballistic skill, Eli? Uh, 39. Awesome. So you get, uh, what, two degrees of success? Yeah. Um, so, so yours is like right next to the, the center pip. Okay. Um, not quite on it, but uh, really very close. And Theseus and... The crowd entirely uh, just gasps as the, the shot from your hunting rifle rings out through the hall. Eli, I, I feel if you had listened to my information earlier about the proper configuration of the scope on your particular ranged weapon, then you would have succeeded just slightly more. Quite, Kappa. You, you talk a lot for a vending machine. <laughs> <laughs> DC is actually, he, he turns to you, um, Engelbart, and he says, yes, yes, you're quite right, Acolyte. Um... Yes, uh, you may wish to, in fact, aim next time, good sir. It, it dramatically improves your, your possibility of hitting. Uh, how I, about I you? I with... slightly in binary cant. <laughs> which how sounds a little bit turns... like this. <laughs> <laughs> that's creepy. Uh, Theseus turns to you and he says, that's creepy. Uh, so he, he turns to you, uh, Jax, and he says, ah, yes, uh, your trusty last pistol. And before uh, you finish, perhaps... he quick draws and shoots and gets a 24. Oh, shit. <laughs> uh, what's your ballistics? 41. All right. So you got one degree of success, so you're outside of the second ring, but uh, you still nail the target. He says, ah, well done, well done. Truly, though, uh, an impressive feat of quick draw, but aiming will serve you better for greater accuracy. And the woman steps up, and she also has a hunting rifle, and she, she holds it up to her shoulder, and she takes an aim and it takes her about two or three seconds longer than any of the rest of you and finally she fires off a shot um and and unfortunately she completely <laughs> fucks up <laughs> and um just as she's about to fire her foot actually slips and her gun sort of jitters to the side and, and uh let's see oh no oh yeah geez. she she, she she nails one of the vendors along the wall. And I need to find the critical damage charts. Oh my god, where are they? Who knows? A woman's They're head in explodes into a fine mist. <laughs> Basically, yeah. Damage. There we go. So this is a, an impact critical effect. Um, I rolled a 14, which is a 41, and so this poor soul was hit directly in the uh, body, in the center of his body. And so the critical damage was four. Uh, uh, so, the, the... so the crit comes from the D10 then? The, yeah. The D100 so, is just like the accuracy or whatever. Okay. The D100 is that the two hit where one. it hits. Yeah. Gotcha. Yep. And and um, the D1, the D10 is the amount of damage it deals. This person had ten hit points, and so she suffered, or he suffered four points of critical damage, um, and that um, means that um, this was an explosive weapon. The force of the burst knocks the target to the ground and stuns him for one round. The target takes two levels of fatigue. Uh, this poor guy, uh, his, his rib cage actually also got blown open. 
Uh, he's still alive, but he's solidly unconscious. A couple of people run over and start helping him up. Um, a couple others start wheeling his cart away. Uh, the entire crowd sort of general gasps. direction and awkwardly applaud. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, Theseus is, uh, he's not too disturbed by this. He, he seems to think this is, you know, pretty par for the course. But uh, all in all, it was um, Eli who had the closest shot. And so he turns to Eli and he says, Ah, well done, good sir. That hunting rifle served you well. And he, he pulls out a, a sack from his waist and he, he holds it out. And as he holds it out to you, you can see sort of under his robe uh, the, the haft of a combat shotgun poking out. And he sort of drops it in your hand. He says, There, that's, that's for doing a wonderful job at my annual sharpshooting competition. Hmm, that looks all... That, that, is that perhaps a Mars pattern shotgun? Ah, unfortunately, no, but it is a thrice-removed descendant of a Mars pattern shotgun. Ah, it was mm, yes, given to inferior me. model, quite. <laughs> yes. <laughs> he just sort of turns and strides away into the crowd. Even in the future, he's British. <laughs> <laughs> and in the grim darkness of the far future... Everyone's everyone fucking British. British. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Oh God! Uh, so, uh, how much money was in the the sack, by the way? Can I? It was uh, it was a hundred thrown thrown uh, thrown gel. Okay, I just put that in my pocket and kind of stroll away, proud of the uh, the shot that was. Saunter into the crowd. Yeah, I just uh, a, a couple of people run up to you and and shake your hand and congratulate you as you're going, but nobody really catches you. Sure. Um, All right. Um, was someone going to try to watch the melee contest? Was that was? Yeah, that um, I was. I was over there watching yeah. the melee contest. Awesome. Well, there's uh, a couple of guys that are are hanging out at the melee contest. Um, the 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 announcer for the melee contest is like a short, burly man with one arm that's like an entirely um, and a, a cybernetic arm. And he says. Um, yeah, uh, for, for our first contest, we have Yurak Monsalis, uh, a, a dockside worker from uh, Dock 17. He is going to be fighting against uh, Chet Helmsworthy, uh, this, this big bruiser of a man over here. Uh, and gentlemen, if you'll take your places, and they, they stand towards each other, and they... they hold out their shock sticks and they ignite them so that they're crackling with energy. And by the way, how far away am I from the ballistic? Uh, from the ballistics range? Yes. Uh, you're within sight um, if you can sort of peer over the crowd, but the crowd is okay. thickly pressed between these two places. Um, and and the, the announcer sort of like clanks his metal arm against um, a metal stool nearby. And he says, begin! And um, uh, Chet Helmsworth, uh, Helmsworthy and Yurak uh, Monsellis sort of start circling each other with their shock sticks. They start sort of trading blows back and forth, but um, each time they try to strike at each other, they're either missing or the, the, the few times that one of them looks like he's about to get a really solid hit in, the other one manages to parry it and knock it off its course. Um, finally, at the at the end of all things, uh, Chet Helmsworthy sort of ducks under one of uh, Yurak's wider swings, and he just like slams his stick into the man's ribs, and the dock worker just crumples to the ground, completely stunned, and uh, the the announcer sort of dings his hand against the the metal stool again, and he says, "We have a winner, Chet Helmsworthy." Uh, and the crowd actually starts going wild. They just, like, cheer crazily. This guy is obviously uh, pretty well-loved. And um, as, he's, as he's standing there sort of basking in the glory, and as, as the announcer uh, reaches into his pocket to pull out a sack of thrown gelt for him, um, you see a, a beautiful young woman come running up. And she throws her arms around his neck, and she says, Oh, Chet, you did so well. I was so worried about you. And he says, Oh... My, my dear, it was, it was nothing, and they sort of walk off hand in hand. And um, that's about all that happened at, at the Melee contest. Um, I wasn't that impressed with Chet. No? No. 
Well, it did take him quite a while to land that. But uh, then yeah. Frix is, is actually not impressed by anyone, as she said earlier. Mm -hmm. So, all right. So, um, the the crowd begins to disperse and and wander around. And um, what are you guys going to do now? Well, I guess, I guess we kind of uh, gravitate back to where we were at the the bar, right? Yeah, because me, Kappa, and and Jax are together at the shooting range. I guess we walk back, right? Yep. All right. To shuffle out of this large open space as fast as possible, if you don't mind. <laughs> this way, little feller. <laughs> how and, how and tall are you, TB? Just what, like? My height is one. It's one sixty-five. Uh, one meter sixty-five, which is not that's that like small. Five feet? That's not that's not ridiculously small. No, but I walk with a stupid sense. It's five feet five. Okay. Right on. Okay. Uh, as as you go, why don't everybody roll an awareness check? Okay. So that's that's against your perception skill. Right. Um, Just another D one hundred. One hundred. Yeah, one D one hundred. I didn't see shit, son. I rolled yep. a 37 and I have 35, so Ooh. is that close? None of us saw anything, did we? <laughs> Alright, um, Eli, you're actually very close, <clears throat> and you're close enough that I can give you a partial success. Yeah. Um, but if you are willing to take the success, then something bad happens. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Fucking something bad happens. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I make it up. No, that's fine. That something bad happens, what happens? All right, so so you notice um, as you're walking back that there's like a couple of guys down one alleyway, and and they're sort of like exchanging something between hands, and it looks an awful lot like like Samsonite, actually. Um, and one of them sees you, and he immediately turns and he 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 disappears into the shadows, and the other one sort of looks around. Uh, this one's got like a, a shock of of dark red hair. And he immediately turns into the shadows and, and runs down that way as well. All right. I kind of just turn my head nonchalantly and continue walking. Once we get into a smaller area for uh, Mr. Kappa, I kind of tell the rest of the, I guess, me, Jax, and Kappa what, what I saw. All right. So you get back to the bar that you were, the dive bar that you were drinking at earlier. Yeah. And you, you let them know what happened. Yeah. Someone was trading, uh, I forget the fucking name of the metal. Samsonite. Samsonite. Uh, so, just just thought you guys should know that. And and That's whenever, whenever uh, it happens, Stephen, I I eventually make it back to the dive bar. Okay. What do you mean, Uncle Bart? Why is it impossible? It, it's impossible. That substance is tightly controlled by the local mechanicus. There is no possibility that it could be in the hands of mere civilians. Are you, you sure you saw that? Saw. I, are you absolutely certain? When was the last time you came into contact with Samsonite? I saw. Was it saw. not true that five minutes ago you couldn't even remember the name of the mineral? <laughs> well, easy was... there now, Pilgrim. But let's. Uh, <laughs> should we go check it out? It sounds like that could be the the percentile we're sent here to investigate. Eli, Frankly, what did they look like? Well, one had uh, fiery red hair. He was the one that was uh, that saw me look at him. The other one walked away into the shadows, so I didn't get a good look at him. Were they naked? <laughs> I don't what know. were they wearing? That was not the time. Steve, for <laughs> quick, mega perception check. <laughs> Steve, were they were they wearing clothes? Did I get anything other than uh, the one's hair? Um, let's see. <laughs> you don't have like um, common lore Imperium or anything like that, do you? No, I don't believe. So. Yeah, I mean, they were just wearing clothes, right? Like, who knows, right? Everybody wears clothes. Nobody's naked. <laughs> God, so commoners' clothes. Yeah, yeah. normal Eli. fucking clothes. Yep, normal clothes. God. Well, should we head back in and check that place out? What do you think? Well, frankly, Jax, I don't think we should be going anywhere on the say so of this fellow that can't tell the difference between Samsonite and a shiny pile of rocks. That is a good point. Well, that is true. What are the consequences of these individuals having the Samsonite in the first place? Well, the fact of the matter is they shouldn't have the Samsonite in the first place. It's supposed to be tightly controlled, going directly to the Imperial Tithe. If it was indeed true that they had the Samsonite, then this would indicate that there was some kind of leak, some kind of illegitimate goings-on, and that materials were being siphoned off of the Tithe into the hands of these well, unwashed masses. Why don't we go then, see them? Then it is our duty 
to make sure that these people don't have the Sapsonite, uh, I suggest that we go after. Eli did say that they seemed upset by being spotted and then disappeared, so regardless, there is some arbitrating to be done here, I'm imagining. Well, it's either that or drink this subpar Amasak bollocks, so let's go and check it out. Everybody knows Amasak bollocks is... Yeah, we should, we should go. 